What's up, YouTube? This project turned out to be a super neat use of another piece of scrap from a previous project. After all the round stuff I've been making, I thought it would be cool to make something square, and I thought it would be extra cool to do it on a tool used for making things round. First, I just did a couple of facing cuts to clean and square up the faces. Nothing out of the ordinary here. Next, I mounted the part in the chuck sideways. And I know you're wondering what kind of square peg in a round hole type black magic is this, but keep watching and you'll see how this works. Also, I didn't realize until this project that the chuck jaws are beveled perfectly for holding parts like this. Next, because of the rather dramatic interrupted cutting, I made sure to line everything up carefully. Once lined up, I made a series of facing cuts, periodically rotating the part 90 degrees. After rotating the part four times, I ended up with a rough cube shape. I took to the internet and learned that standard dice have 16 millimeter sides. So I used this measurement as a guide to bring the cube to its final dimensions.
Once it was the proper dimensions, I did some rough hand sanding to remove any chuck marks and smooth out the sharp edges. I followed the rough sandpaper with some finer hand sanding. And finally, a little bit of light polishing. The best way I could think of to mark the side indentions to be drilled was with a coating of layout fluid and a small scribe. The internet also told me that dice are generally defined in one of two patterns, clockwise and counterclockwise respectively. I chose clockwise since I like to look to the future and not dwell on the past and scribed unique patterns in each side to mark the corresponding denomination. After everything was marked, I took to the drill press to drill some indents. First, I carefully used a center drill bit to mark the final position of each indent. Once everything was marked, I used a small drill bit to lightly mark each indention. The most boring step in this project was waiting for the aluminum black to science the indentions one side at a time. I left what was left of the layout fluid on for this step to try to protect the surfaces from any overflowing aluminum black. After all the indentions were darkened, I washed off the remaining aluminum black and used fine sandpaper to clean up the sides and followed it with some brake cleaner to remove any excess layout fluid that might have been left. And that's it, a really neat looking solid aluminum game die of proper size with a proper pattern. 
Hopefully you enjoyed this project and I'd love to hear what you thought in the comments. As always, thanks for watching and please like and subscribe.